It's time to re-engage with LinkedIn. Yes, I said it, LinkedIn, the forgotten network. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 167. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, how long has LinkedIn been around? I don't know. I didn't even look those stats A up. long time. Huh? I'm going to look that up while we're talking. All right. Well, you Google that. You put a little Google on that, and I'll tell you why I wanted to talk about this today. Because, you know, we have been doing a lot of training. We're very excited to have put together some really awesome training recently and it's got me re-looking at things and one of the one of the themes that came out of this preparation for this training course we call real estate sales builder is the need for not trying to be all things to all people and especially when it comes to social media and choosing your channel and really you know going for it so that being said and what I mean by that is you can't really be an influencer or make a difference on YouTube and Facebook and TikTok and Snapshot and LinkedIn and wherever else you want to go put your energy in. So it is important to kind of know where are your clients and and so on. Now, I've always been a proponent that you do need to have an all-star LinkedIn profile because it's going to come up when someone Googles you. So I will go on as saying that even after what I'm going to share with you today, because I have re-engaged with LinkedIn and discovered cool stuff there and found, I think, that there is even a little bit more engagement for me when it comes to connecting with other agents, uh, getting some feedback on things, just because I started to pay attention to it again. And that's what I wanted to share today is three strategies to get you to relook. Maybe, maybe give LinkedIn a, a refresh and consider that this could be a way for you to grow your business and for sure get found on Google when somebody Googles your name at a very minimum. But I, I'm kind of excited about engaging with it more and we'll do some, well, once I get going with a few other things, uh, I'll be able to come back and report on on is it working more for me there than Facebook? Frankly, I think what I want to say is we're going to do a lot with YouTube, us personally, here with our coaching company. We're all about YouTube and video and our podcast. So we do our podcast out of habit and because we love it, but it also gives us content to be able to go put it on YouTube and across our social network. So it's our, it's our number one way that we help build content with LinkedIn coming in now as a, another way that we want to build it out. And also for me personally, as a real estate agent, building teams in Florida and Nevada, I want to engage with, with um, YouTube, but LinkedIn is an opportunity now for me personally to start building that agent network that I'm always talking about and to re-engage and look for other people. I find that people are more business-like on LinkedIn. Sure. Even though what I've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed it because you check your LinkedIn. No, I go look at it every day. LinkedIn looks, LinkedIn has always been the whole, we're not Facebook, we're not Snapchat. However, comma, they want to be a little bit more like that because they're all about trying to get you to put video up there. Do They introduced Facebook, I mean, sorry, LinkedIn Live a couple years ago. Now the newest thing is LinkedIn Stories. You know, LinkedIn Stories is the same thing you can get on Facebook and on Instagram. And even YouTube is doing kind of a stories, a short video shorts, not really stories, it's video shorts. Which is because people they want the short content, they want the video content, right? I love you know it's so funny how people really are their attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, right? Which is where why these stories are as popular as they are, so you can right. communicate your message in two seconds, right? I have Grammarly, you know the uh, the kind of spell check uh, uh, program, and I upgraded to the premium just recently, and I love. I love it because it help it it, it it analyzes what you're writing, and I had written just an email just yesterday um, that it, I you know I clicked it and it really was okay. I got a 99, but it said at the bottom, "This content is rather long. Some people may scan this email." 
Oh, that's brilliant. It made me laugh. I thought to myself, good lord, what? I mean, I I could, I looked through it again and I thought, what else could I take out of here? There wasn't anything to take out. It was Honestly, just kind of funny. That's just, it just goes to show you that even programs are telling you they just keep it simple, baby. So yeah, interesting. Keep it simple and use white space. In fact, some of the things I was researching were because people scan and we've become worse at that because all we've been yep. doing for years now is scanning our feed reading very quickly looking what's going to catch our attention this is why people say use white space put emojis use hashtags hashtags on linkedin matt how long have i been talking about hashtags work on other yep. networks like linkedin well there is a whole thing with hashtags that's been around for a couple of years now but this is an inside joke from like five, six years ago. Yeah. Like, well, it was Facebook before, right? It's like, uh, well, well, and you, but you definitely can use them there and you, it's how people find things. And it's well, on, on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, when you're writing your post, it actually recommends it's, that. It's right? asking you to do that. And then you can yeah. follow industry hashtags so that you, this, which is a whole nother strategy, by the way, which we're not going to get into today because I'm going to talk about three. Let me jump into the three. Well, before you strategies. go there, Jan O'Brien, LinkedIn has been around since 2002. 2002. 2002. So almost 20 years for crying out loud. That's a long time. You know what? And uh, here, let's just do a little fact check right now. I'm going to see. C can you find when you're in your profile? I'm looking at my profile. I want to know how long. I wonder if you can see. Oh, how long you've actually been a, a been a member. How long you've been a member. I bet you it's on there. Hey, um, and also LinkedIn claims that uh, there is someone that hi uh, signs up for LinkedIn every second. <laughs> and can you, while you're looking at that, see how... Uh, how many users there are? Are you seeing any of those other factoids? Like, no, but I will I will look at that as well. We'll have that in the wrap up. Right, I'll, I'll do a little honestly, uh, search here. This is the point. There's just definitely engagement. Pretty much everybody has a LinkedIn profile that is in business. And if you're wanting to connect with clients or build more clientele, you know, there's just so much. And there's so much to talk about in LinkedIn. As a matter of fact, we're writing a course on getting the most out of LinkedIn. That's my next project. So I will be sharing my little snippets here in our podcast over on and in, in our, some of our YouTube videos coming up. And then we'll have a, a really neat course that you can come look at if you really want to dive into it and make it your platform of choice. And I'm not going to call it a social media channel yet. Um, I feel like it's more powerful than that. It's a powerful search engine. It's crazy. There's so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have so much fun with LinkedIn, and I'll be sharing all my experiences. Well, and it ideas certainly is the way that you find out about people, and it's actually yeah. shocking. Well, it's not really shocking because we know people pretty well, don't we, Jenna Brian? But how bad people's profiles are on LinkedIn when you look oh, at it's, it. Oh, it's 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 the very first tip. So with yeah, that, let's get to that. I'm, I'll stop. Thank I'll you. stop uh, digressing. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. <laughs> well, with that, that is the absolute best first um, idea here. And so as I've got in, I'm just sharing what, what we'll have in the show notes for you. Uh, if you go on over there, we do have a bonus for you today, actually. And that bonus is go to the show notes for episode 167, WBNL Coaching or WBNL Podcast will take you right to the page and look for 167 and you'll be able to get our coveted 11 tips to an all-star profile guide. And that is my number one first strategy. Before you even do anything on LinkedIn, any of these other ideas I'm going to share with you today, just two more ideas, but we're going to go deep on the next one is get your freaking profile to an all-star status. Follow our 11 tips. Uh, I'm actually going to do a video on this for YouTube and I'll go in and, and demo exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but here's the key things that I want to share with you that are my pet peeves, as Matt was just saying. Number one, when you go to somebody's profile or your own profile and you click on the little contact info button, you don't even have to scroll down. You're on somebody's profile. And the contact info is has nothing in it. It'll have like what their LinkedIn profile is and maybe their email. And, I'm, yeah. and there is an opportunity in there to give put three different website links or another social media or a landing page or a link to a podcast or your YouTube channel. You have three places to put that. You obviously want to add your phone number. 
And the other thing it brings me to is your URL, your LinkedIn custom URL. I know someone is not a power LinkedIn user when they have Matt Emerson, AB12978 at the end of their name. That's right. And that's super easy to do. There's a button when you're in your profile in the upper right-hand corner to go to customize your profile. And you go there and you make it be your name. You want what's after the LinkedIn forward slash, I think it's called, I think it says IN and then whatever uh -huh. you put there is your, and it should be your name. Why? Because when somebody Googles you, you want your LinkedIn, pro your LinkedIn profile is going to come up on the first page of Google, in my opinion, unless you're just a power online presence person and it might push over to the second page. I generally find it on the first page and people are going to go check it out. So this is your opportunity, even if you don't do any of the other things I'm going to talk about today, oh. to let people see a powerful profile that is loaded with information and to tell a story about you. This is your opportunity. So we've been saying for a long time, LinkedIn at a minimum is the set it and forget it. Now I want to share with you that I think it's time to re-engage and revisit and do a few more things and you don't have to do a ton of them. I'm just going to share some simple things today, but if you're all in, we'll do another podcast and, and probably a YouTube video on how you can even go you know, deeper with this and it can become your platform of choice. Okay. Depending on what your goals are. So get that thing, contact info. Let me back up. Make sure you have a, a, uh, a recent professional headshot that actually looks like you because you are going to be meeting people and they need to, you know, they need, you need to look like your photo. Yeah. And that's it's not a plus. dating site, people. That's not a dating site. <laughs> you don't have to right. catfish people. However, it could be. Well, uh, uh, that's a good it, point. It could, it frankly, could be. Uh, I noticed that Facebook, maybe Facebook uh, has always had this, but there's like a, a dating thing on Facebook. Have you noticed that? I have not noticed that. There is a thing that says, you know, you know, set up your profile. I'm like, no way, not on Facebook. God. All right. Anyway, your <laughs> your headshot and your banner, your your yeah. LinkedIn banner. That needs to be branded. That's the other pet peeve of mine. I go to somebody's LinkedIn and it's just like the the basic LinkedIn, like nothing. The <laughs> cartoon or the color. Yeah, yeah. like whatever. A two-tone LinkedIn like looks like a you know cardboard. So, oh my gosh, that's an opportunity for you to brand yourself. And it ought to look the same across all the other channels like your website and so forth. It's a great opportunity. And Matt, where could they get a LinkedIn banner? Really easy to do. If you just go to um, Canva, you can do it super right. easy in there. Super. And can you just find a LinkedIn banner as well? There's all kinds this? of LinkedIn banners in there. And if you if you are a Canva user, for crying out loud, you already have your brand kit set up. You can easily brand yourself right back on. And if you're not creative, there are actually examples of LinkedIn banners. There's probably hundreds them. of LinkedIn right. banners on there. All right. So we get it. I'm just giving you a few of these 11 tips. Your banner, your your photo, your contact information, and I'm going to give you two more in the here. The next one is to really use the headline area. The headline area, I think you can have 200 characters in the headline area. And sometimes you'll have people have realtor. You need your city in there because again, it is a search engine, folks. When you're in LinkedIn and you go up there and you search real estate agent, comma, you know, uh, Tampa, comma, something else. If somebody was looking for that and you have those keywords in your in your profile, there's an opportunity for people to find you. Uh, and, and then even if they're not connected with you, if, if they can get to your contact information because you've made a profile, they can find you and they can call you or they could, you know, go Google you and find you. And this is what people do. It's crazy. People, I've had this happen recently in the last week. Um, you know, we've made a move. I've made, I've moved my license to Fidacity Realty. Super excited about this new company. Uh, in Vegas and in Florida happens to be in both places that I have a real estate license. Uh, and I have had a couple people who are seeing some of the advertisements that are going on, um, uh, reach out to me because they're trying to find information. It's such a ground floor opportunity, new company. There's not a ton of content out there yet. It's just all coming together. But I just recently made some changes on my profiles, like my Google, my business and my realtor.com. And then people found me and then they Googled me. And then I've actually gotten two agents reach out to me through realtor.com because they wanted information. That is what consumers do. That's what agents do. And this is why you must have an amazing presence online. It's so frustrating to go find somebody's LinkedIn profile. And I'm like, oh my God, I guess this person does not want anybody to contact them. Right. Uh, so fix it. 
You can also, in the description, go check out my, you know, I invite you to come to connect with me on LinkedIn and you will see an example of an all-star profile. I actually have the little all-star banner. They're good. LinkedIn is like, it gamifies all these social media that gamify your yep. this day. Keep going. You're almost there. You almost got your five stars. Come on, do this and do this and do this and you'll be an all-star profile. And it's good because it, it, it helps you continue to get better at it. The other area that I want to make sure you're clear on is update your most current experience. I don't know how many times I've gone to somebody's profile and it's like, it's not even the company they belong to anymore. They have just forgot to update it. They don't have a lot. Uh, they're not leveraging all the power of the multimedia that you can add. I mean, my gosh, you could put up, if you, if you are a real estate agent listening and you have marketing materials and videos that you want people to see, they need to be in your LinkedIn profile and it's going to make your profile pop. Maybe you have an intro video. Maybe you have uh, you know, here's what I do to sell your home, list your home, or as a buyer's agent, this is why you would want to work with me. You can upload those assets like a PDF, a slide deck, a video, and pop it into your experience area, also in your summary area. And that's the last area, the last tip around your profile that I'm going to talk about today. And that is your summary. It's the about area. Now, when Microsoft purchased LinkedIn, they really changed the way the profile looked and it became very Microsoft looking. I, I actually felt it became more Apple looking, if you must mm -hmm. say. It became very white spacey, very clean looking. They collapsed. So one of the areas they collapsed was the summary area and it says, you know, it's about you. Now all that shows up is the first three lines and somebody has to hit more. So without saying it, it's obvious, everybody, the most important stuff needs to be in those first three lines. But take advantage of the one, I think it's 2,000 characters. It's a lot. You, you can put in the summary and it's an opportunity for you to say, who are you? I say right in the first person, who are you? Who you work with? Why should somebody work with you? And put your contact information in there. Tell people how they can get a hold of you. Uh, that, just go do that. Just go do those things. Go get the download. Do the other things. There's a few other things that we mentioned in the 11 tips. Then you've got an all-star profile. Now, if you don't even move on to the next two things I'm going to chat with you about, you still have a home run because you have an all-star profile. It's going to really showcase who you are. And this is the point I'm trying to drive home all the time. Uh, and gosh, I've been talking about this for years, and it still amazes me how many people just have no clue that people are Googling them and they look horrible online. So do this one thing with your LinkedIn profile, and you're controlling the narrative. If you don't, the fact that you're not putting good information in there and telling your story lets people know that you're just not, you know, I, maybe I don't want to work with you. You know, you don't have any recommendations. You don't even care to, you know, update your photo or give me your contact information. You're not really into this, you know, pass. Okay. It's one more reason why to pass on you versus, wow, this guy is squared away. Look at all the things he's done and look what he's done before he was in real estate. And I connect with that. That's, that's yeah, yeah me too. Right? Absolutely. You're finding that common ground, right? And you know, uh, if you have a choice of two people that you're looking at, you're going to put the person that you can relate to more for crying out loud. Right on. You know, all right, so number two is if you're going to do this and you've got your all-star profile squared away, number two is you've got, to, you've got to post engaging content. By the way, this is the number one strategy after a profile for any of the networks. Okay. You must, and let me give you ideas here. Okay. Now, one thing that has been happening, here's what's so crazy. I haven't been paying attention to my LinkedIn. This is why we're having a conversation about it today, because I got more engagement just by going back to it and doing these things I'm sharing with you today. And what has been going up for me. So it looks like I am, you know, staying relevant. First of all, I definitely have an all-star profile, but I have Keeping Current Matters. I love Keeping Current Matters. And they do a daily blog post, which is very engaging, both for realtors and for consumers. It's written for consumers, but I find it to be great stuff to get caught up on what's happening, sure. trends. Um, once, five days a week, Monday through Friday, brand new blog post. Now, what I did inside of my Keeping Current Matters um, site is had it automatically post to my LinkedIn profile. You can actually have those blog posts automatically go to your Facebook page if you want as well. So I have had at least once a, a day for five days a week, a post going from Keeping Current Matters. And I get some engagement with that. People will like it. Somebody might make a comment, um, but I'm not even going in there and writing back or making any comments. And that's the mistake that I'm making, right? So at a minimum, you can do that. Now, if you're not familiar with Keeping Current Matters, you can get a free trial. It's only four, it's a 14 day free trial. It's probably the best investment I've ever made in real estate of a tool that I use all the time. It's where I get my content for my monthly market update, which I just recorded the other day. 
if you want to get an idea of that, Matt, will you do that too, just so people can get an idea of how I'm leveraging keeping current matters? Can you put a, a link? Sure, absolutely. To our, if you're our, watching our, on YouTube, it's always on our post, but I will absolutely I'll put in the show but, notes. Uh, a link well. to my um, our O'Brien Morabi team uh, blog. I mean YouTube because that's where the um, videos are for market updates. Oh, you want? Oh, you link to that? Sure. Yeah, I just want if if you want to get an idea of how to do a market uh, gotcha. a local market update and leverage. Like I didn't have to come up with all of that. I put my spin on it, but I get the content every month from Keeping Current Matters. And that is actually something I think that you should be posting on LinkedIn as well. Mm -hmm. It's going to be able to show you could post your video. Now, one of the keys I want to share with you is you there is something here. You could post your YouTube video link and talk about it or to get even more power on LinkedIn and have LinkedIn maybe pick it up, I'd recommend writing an article once a month, which I'm jumping ahead here, but let me just talk about it. You can create posts or articles when you're in the post area on LinkedIn. Um, and articles are like blog posts. So posts are just like what you do on Facebook, okay? It's in your activity feed on LinkedIn. That's where you could share an interesting article, whether it's from Keeping Current Matters or Realtor.com or wherever else you like to get good information. And when you post some article, it's smart to basically uh, put your opinion on it or maybe ask a question and see if you can get some engagement. Hey, here's a great article uh, talking about you know when the uh, inventory is going to get better. What what are your thoughts? You know, um, you know what are you experiencing? If depending on who you're speaking to, so that uh, article. So back to this marketing thing. So you would upload your video. So if you record a video every month, like I do, we put it on YouTube. But I'm going to start putting it on LinkedIn. So yeah. we're going to upload the LinkedIn. I mean, upload the video to an article. Then I already write the content around it. Cut and paste that. And in the article, you have a place for a, a, a cool image, like a real true blog post. You can put links, you can put videos and images in. So I have images that are in my article from some of the slides that I got from Keeping Current Matters. I can just basically post it all up, native video up into LinkedIn. And this is powerful because if that article starts getting a little traction, LinkedIn you know, starts uh, recommending it sort of like being on YouTube. You know, that's interesting, Jan O'Brien. Is there a uh, a um, size limit to the videos you can post on LinkedIn? I don't I don't know. Wait, let's find that out. I'm going to check know. that out. Oh, that's a great question. We need to find that out. Um, so so posts. To the Googles. To the All Googles. Right. Uh, but we'll give you a link to, we have an affiliate with a link with Keeping Current Matters. Here's what it does. It gives us a free month, gives you a $25 coupon if you sign up. So, um, you know, check it out. I'm telling you, it's brilliant. You, you actually have, I just pay the, I'm on the $40 a month plan because there are also social media posts that you can get. There are stories that you could grab the graphics and put into your stories, obviously for LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and they do videos once a week. Um, All right. I have, anyway. the, let me, let me throw, throw the stat in on that one. Videos must be at least three seconds long and can't exceed 10 minutes. The maximum file size is five gigabytes. So that's not very big, really. <clears throat> uh, you know what? That's a great point. So I'll have to check out and see if the like the video I just did, um, if if it would meet that standards. Like, th I wonder what how how many minutes would you say? Oh, ten minutes or so, right? Ten so minutes is the minutes. maximum. Can't exceed ten minutes. So I'm just wondering, right. like, if you can't do that, if the native video is bigger than that, can you, I guess you could always put a link in your article. It's well, that's power, a, I'm glad you looked that up because um, I generally my market videos are less than 10 minutes and I happened to do one longer this time because I was really getting into why I, I in this video I talked about uh, why I don't believe we're going to have a housing market crash or right. a housing bubble. And, and actually, that's cool because I could record it again. It was really good information. And but, you know, really, create an article. If this starts, if this is a way that you really start seeing engagement, if you have a longer message you want to get, just film two, you know, have two parts. You know what I mean? You could, you, there's always a yeah. workaround, right? So, yeah. So, this is something we've been sharing with people. Like, I, there are two particular articles that I liked recently from Keeping Current Matters. One was four reasons why we're not going to have a foreclosure crisis. And it lists the four reasons with backup statistics. That's an awesome video to share. The whole point I'm making here is, you can reuse the content that yeah. you're paying for with Keeping Current Matters and share it as a post or perhaps take it and, and use it as an article, but maybe add your um, add your information on or perhaps your video that you record about it 
And now you're showing yourself as that local market expert, but you're getting the help. And this is what I know everybody's freaked out about. It's like, this is why I'm going on and on about get the resources coming to you. It's not like you need to sit down and go, oh my gosh, let me write an article and do a video on four reasons why the housing market is not going to crash. Okay. You get the information, repurpose it. Um, you have the right to use it when you're a member of Keeping Current Matters. In fact, they want you there. They, they, they send stuff out and say, here's a video you need to do right now. And they actually said, here's the script. I mean, how easy is that? Yeah. That was something I just saw a week ago and it got, That's got brilliant. I got the idea from it and then I expanded on it. And it was like, the, here's the information. Here's the charts you use and here's what you say. How easy can that be? Yeah, it cannot so, be any easier than that. Now you just do it. But it's going to even be better when you put your own spin on it. You know, you were telling me about uh, just speaking of video for a minute. You were chatting about um, your cousin in uh, Fort Myers uh -huh. getting uh, an agent. Now, this agent was doing a technique that we teach all the time about uh, reaching out. I, I may have a buyer for your property. It's an uh, inventory. We talked about it recently on a podcast and she he's doing the same thing. But his video was was engaging. But it was basic, right? Oh, it was super basic. But I, have, I watched the whole thing, though. <laughs> You know, I did too. Yeah. He, he basically had on a whiteboard, the key stats for his area and he yep. just talked about it. And then he closed and talked about the market. And I mean, just, but he was just willing to do it. So it doesn't have to look all fancy. All right. So let me keep moving on here. Uh, you can do tons of things with posts. You can do your monthly market update inside of that post area on your feed. You can create a poll. I think some of the coolest, just like Instagram, some of the coolest engaging content is you create a poll and you ask people to, to complete it. You know, and then you'll get, pe I do it. Do you do that sometimes? I've never do done I, that. I'm going to have to start trying that. I do it with Twitter. I, I, people that use polls. Oh yeah, Twitter, I've seen it. I've done it on Twitter before. I, I will, if it's engaging to me, why not? You're just kind of interested. You're intrigued to know what other people say. Right. So that's easy. That's right there. You can ask questions like, you know, which kitchen, backyard or floor plan is the best, you know, and then you have some photos or something, right? You can create a list. A couple other things I've seen on LinkedIn I like are things like, um, here's, how about this? Because it has become more not just about business. It's about more transparency. And, and during COVID, I think more people were posting more, you know, uh, personal kind of things that are on LinkedIn. Um, but I think, you know, keep it, keep it not crazy. Like, here's what I ate for dinner. Uh, it's not that kind of a network, but it can be things like, here are five binge worthy, uh, you know, um, shows I've just watched. In fact, let's talk about that for a second because it is engaging. Right. And then, it, so I'm going to tell you, I have been watching on HBO max, um, the nevers. Oh my God. It's so brilliant. It's like sci-fi Victoria, London. I love it. Totally love that one. Uh, and it's just freaking ended. And then, uh, mayor of East East, uh, what is it called? I don't town. Isn't it just Kate, East town? Kate, East, East something. I can't think of it. East yeah. something. Uh, Mayor uh, Kate Winslet. She's brilliant in that. Um, and who else is in that? Who also has an HBO Max show? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's she, uh, Jean Smart is in it. That's and right. you got to watch. Uh, Hacks. It's called Hacks. Hacks is brilliant. Uh, so the whole point is you could create a post saying, here are three things I've recently binged. Highly recommended. What's your recommendation? And people will start talking to you about yeah. it for sure. This is what we're all doing. And Matt and I do this all the time because I'm we like, do. hey, what are, you, what, are you, what are you listening to or watching or on podcasts that you like? Exactly. Uh, but that's, the way, that's how you start getting engagement. You can do this on other channels as well, but this really can work on LinkedIn as well. And the, the whole thing with LinkedIn stories is um, – you can only do it on the app. Okay. So that would be the LinkedIn app version, which mm. you can do everything that you need to. So I talked about articles, videos, you know, you can go live and you can post videos. Like I mentioned, right up, uh, like in an article, not like a link from another source, you'll get better. And here's the last idea. And it's just, if you're going to, you do your profile, your profile, once you have it done is done until you need to update because maybe you took a course or you have a new certification or you move to company or whatever. Um, then it's not a lot of work, right? But Posting something, you can do some automation, but I think you need to get in there and get personal. But this is the part that takes your time. And I'm suggesting 15 to 30 minutes a day. Don't go down the rabbit hole too deep. Schedule 30 minutes a day if this is going to be your thing. And maybe just in the beginning of the day, or maybe it's 15 minutes in the beginning of the day and 15 minutes at the end of the day, and you're just on a mission. And the mission is you open up your LinkedIn. This is what I do. I go to my notifications and I see if there's anything interesting there. This is where it's going to say, so-and-so has a birthday. Uh, you know, and you have an opportunity to engage or this person just updated or did this and there's an opportunity there for you. 
um, you might see responses to your posts or things that you did. And there's an opportunity for you to now know who to go talk to, right? So check your notifications and then you'll have messages. Now, a lot of times in LinkedIn, you get spammed with a lot of people trying to connect with you. I'm selective in who I connect with. I am too. You know, so I didn't used to be, but I am now. I am now if I get a feeling like this yeah. is just someone who's going to be constantly messaging me in LinkedIn, trying to get me to buy their stuff. And so, you know, but you'll be able to, obviously that is a, a thing that we're going to tell you, you need to do here because that's what you have to do. You need to clean out your messages is what I'm saying. Go in there, see if there's anything that you want to respond to. Some people are using an automator of a, which I don't really like, where they make the connection and then an automation kind of comes through. I think you have to make those. If somebody connects with you, it's an opportunity now to start a conversation. And that's what you do in this 15 minutes. Uh, then you go find people that you want to connect with, yeah. which we're going to save for another podcast because I really want to be able to show you how powerful it is and how you can use specialties and niche marketing a little bit, niche marketing, and go find people to connect with, um, how to build an agent network. I'll, we'll show you. We'll share with you some of those ideas because that is where it's powerful. Then you can reach out, make connections, start conversations. Now, if you've done one, Profile's awesome, and you do too. You have engaging content, and you start making connections. People are like, "All right, this is somebody worth worth staying in connect and uh, staying in uh, contact with, and maybe someone else think about using in the future." Right? That's the idea. It's good stuff, Jana Brian and, and Jan. I know that you're probably anticipating this and can hardly wait. Probably on the edge of your seat, but you know, next week you're going to get a lot of messages from people you do not know wishing you a happy birthday. That is the truth. Ah! And uh, yeah. So I, I love it because my birthday was, you know, a couple weeks ago and it makes me laugh. It's like a lot of, Inst no, not Instagram, uh, Facebook, Facebook. Messages are all, all friends and family, LinkedIn, a bunch of people I don't know. You know, it makes me laugh. Yeah. Just, just when I updated uh, with a new company to Fidacity Realty, uh, that's what happened. People are following those tactics with, uh, yep. They went to their LinkedIn, which they're doing daily. They looked at notifications and said, congratulate Jan on her new job. Yep. And and I got the standard, you know, just people just click the button. Congrats. Saying, Congrats on the yeah. new position. But then there were a few people who engaged with me. And this is why this got me kind of jazzed about. Hmm. I've got like 5,000, 5,200 connections on LinkedIn. I've been, that's why I was trying to figure out. I've been on it since the beginning. Really, I've always. I'm going to show you how to do that. So just, well, I'm going to, well, I'm going to show you. It's funny because, um, what was I just going to say about? Uh, oh, that it, when you get those those random things from people you don't know, it's it. I started going in during that and trying to find out a little bit more about these people, and that's when I was going in thinking, well, these people are kind of engaged, right? Because they're trying to engage with you. But then you go and you look at some of their profiles. You're like, wah, wah, wah. you should need to get back before you start contacting people. You need to get with your program there. Hey, uh, according to, I, I found a new uh, stat list. According to this thing, this one, um, uh, it launched in 2003, not 2002. So uh, nine months before Facebook. Interesting, right? Yeah. So that's LinkedIn, the oldest of the major social media networks in use today. LinkedIn has 33 offices and 15,800 employees. LinkedIn is available in 24 languages. Uh, let's see here. LinkedIn is the most trusted network in the United States. 73% of social media users uh, agree that LinkedIn provides the best privacy and data. Uh, LinkedIn has 722 million members. 70 or 57% of them are men, 43 are women. How many million? Six percent of LinkedIn users are outside of the United States. That's interesting, isn't it? Seventy-six okay, so outside of the United States. Um, how many million again? I'm sorry, U.S. Seven hundred and twenty-two million members. But is that uh, uh, worldwide? Yeah, worldwide. Okay, so here we go. Here's the final other little tidbit on LinkedIn. Gotta love Google. So I just said, how do you find how long you've been a member on LinkedIn? And here it is. Go to settings. Oh, I got it. How old? Did you look at yours? No, go to settings and privacy under your profile picture. Click how LinkedIn uses your data. All right. So I got to go do this. Did you I just did. go to yours? I know. I, I, I bet you beat me because you always do in this kind of stuff. But I was kind of, I'm happy with how long I've been a member. Okay. Hold on. This is it. How, how, where do you go, Matt? How you, how do, where do you go for it? Here, I'll, I'll, I, I, here, let me just share and I'll walk you through it. Will you, will you, will you give me a demo of that? I will give you here? a demo, Jana Brian. Hold on. Let me just find what screen I'm on here. Because <laughs> so I'm in there and I'm not listening. There are too many things here. Here's the demo. Let's see. Chrome tab. Where's the Matt Emerson tab here? There he is. 
How linked okay, you, okay. Need to you go up to your to your little me up here. Yeah. You're gonna go to settings and privacy. Good, I'm there. All right. You're going to go to uh, LinkedIn. how LinkedIn. Oh, manage your data and activity. Change or and then go to your this whole little deal here. You go to your screen here, and it shows you the very last one will be when you join LinkedIn. I joined June twenty fourth, two thousand and nine. Hold on, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I have to go to uh, page four. <laughs> you ready? June fifth, yep. two thousand seven. See, there you go. You so we were, we, were a little, we were five or, you know, five or so years uh, behind the original launch, but I think we've been pretty good there, Jana Brand, getting in there early. I've been on LinkedIn since 2007. So there you go, folks. You also learned some snippets about LinkedIn. You can uh, definitely go, go, go over and get our show notes for sure uh, and at least get your LinkedIn profile going and consider, you know, here's the thing. You do have to choose your, your lane choose your social media platform because everything is a time suck and you can't do it all. And so I get excited when I start revisiting some of these, when I'm working on training and I'm like, Oh, LinkedIn, I, I forgot about you since 2007. And I have That's been right. teaching people, you know, at least to get the profile. And I use it all the time to make connections or go find out about somebody. You know, I definitely use it that way, but you know, I'm really going to, I'm, so I have decided for me, you know, I'm like, should I go to Instagram again? And I'm thinking, I think I'm not. I think I'm going to just stick with YouTube. We do our podcast because we just do it and we have fun with it. I'm going to stay with YouTube and I'm going to really focus on LinkedIn as my channels of choice. So there you have it. Way to focus, channel, Brian. That's very good. Okay. Anything That's else? That's all we have for today. I got nothing else either. All I know is I love this whole 50% of the country being vaccinated. It is so nice to be out with people again and having people for the most part, just feeling better about being around other people. It's a nice thing. I've seen a lot of people in the last couple of weeks. Nice. I'm loving it. And I really want to get out. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do something for my birthday, you know, and I'm just deciding whether or not I'm just going to go on a little adventure. I just was up in Georgia and visiting family and I got to go to the beautiful black mountain, North Carolina, which is just outside in uh, Asheville, which is beautiful country up there. Mountain yeah, country. Gorgeous. Uh, forests and so forth. It was just wonderful. And it was nice to, it was a small group. It was still just 30 people all because of COVID and so on, but man, it was nice to get out. Just this morning before we got on the podcast, I made camping reservations at Kings Canyon for the end of June. So it's going to be so nice to get back to a national park. I can't wait. You're doing it. See, we're all feeling good and <sighs> moving forward. You know what I think we'll do? Let's do this in the podcast next week. I do want to share um, some of those statistics that I was talking about and encourage everybody to get going with doing something similar about the market and those ideas around those articles. And I think I'll just share the insights I've gained and uh, yep. let's do that next week. Okay. So now we have a come on back next week and we're going to talk about how you can create an epic post or a video around why the housing market's not going to crash and which could potentially help you get out and get more listings now. Cause I think the timing is now uh, we months ago, March, we talked about five ways to get listings during this low inventory and it's continuing to be low, but I feel things are starting to crack. And as soon as more people feel comfortable based on what Matt just said, people are starting to feel like the economy's opening up. Um, you know, I can, I, I feel better. Maybe I can put my house on the market. As soon as people start doing that, it will, I will guarantee you, it'll trigger. It's like the old adage, a sign goes up in, in a neighborhood, one yeah. or two more signs pop up. Watch, that's going to start happening, folks. Yeah, start absolutely. Start paying attention to the for sale signs you see. And you need to get in on that. You need to get ahead of people right now. So we'll talk a little bit about that and we'll update that and talk a little bit about how can you leverage a, a really epic article to reach out to your database and uh, get an opportunity to talk to them about what's happening in the market. Because it's on everybody's mind. Uh, I saw a statistic and again, I got it from Keeping Current Matters and they backed it up with data that showed the searches in Google were up, I said it was about 3,000, but it was 2,450, right around 2,500, I'll call it, percent last month for people in Google saying, when is the housing market going to crash? Is there going to be a housing bubble? P it's on people's mind and you need to do, to know that it's on their mind. And this is the whole thing about following trends. When you know what things are going on, then you put content together 
to answer that and you'll become that go-to person. That's right. So, all right. Yeah, our podcast there. drop on Friday. So next Friday actually is Jan O'Brien's birthday. So make sure you go to LinkedIn and wish her a happy birthday. Yeah, or do the thing. Uh, no, that's it. That's fine. Yes, do that. <laughs> okay. All right, bye. All right, everybody. You know how uh, we end our show every week uh, by saying to get up and get out. And that's kind of nice that we've been talking about people getting up and getting out again. So that's a good thing. And be safe and be Take also outside, people. Be forever wandering but not lost. <laughs>